As a record producer and writer, rhymes, beats, and lines is how I mainly communicate with the world. So that's my plan for today. There's just about nothing you can say that doesn't sound better with music. The advent of the internet was supposed to be a time for artists to run free, be all they could be, and reach the fans without the man. The man, in this case, was one of the six major labels that helped to market and sell what they call units, that I call music. The news we were hearing was that we would be free to sell our music, free to market our songs. What could possibly go wrong? It turns out, a lot. Our music could now travel freely across oceans, straight to the heart. But what's an ocean without sharks? And if we're having sharks in the sea, then we've got to have pirates too. And now we find artists caught between these two. As fast as we can make music, it is being stolen from us. It is a little like being mugged every day, very gently. Piracy killed the radio star. Those artists who speak up against piracy, from Madonna to Metallica to U2, find themselves hacked and attacked in some kind of digital mob rule. You see, rock and roll has to be down with the kids. It comes from a culture of rebellion. So when you try and tell the kids what to do, they say, F off, we learned that from you. <laughs> But new artists have no choice. New artists have no voice. The music industry resembles Detroit. So what has changed in our culture that makes it okay to steal what an artist creates? Is it really stealing if you download what an artist created and you don't pay them for it? It's all about consequences. And piracy has no consequences. It's time to fix the music industry. Your ISP can see who is downloading what content, legal and illegal. ISPs even profit from pirates who purchase more bandwidth. For the last 20 years, ISPs have been sitting by and watching people download illegal content. Is that moral? Would you allow that to happen in your business? No. What we need are laws that force ISPs into a place of social responsibility. This year, French lawmakers passed a three strikes rule, a graduated response to ISPs by lawmakers. Strike one, if you are caught downloading, you get sent a letter. Strike two, your internet speed is slowed down. Strike three, your internet access is cut off. So here's what happened. CD and iTunes sales went up by 22 and 25%. Downloading dropped by 44%. Millions of dollars was returned to the artist. Fixed. Google, don't be evil. Don't be evil is how the Google motto goes. But doing no evil isn't always what you need. Sometimes you need a little help from your friends. In this case, search engines. Google an artist's latest CD. The results returned by Google will give you a number of ways to get that record now, of which at least half are free and illegal. Google gets click-through revenue, and the artist watches in dismay, as more often than not these fans choose not to pay. Google and other search engines need to stop returning results from sites that infringe copyright. Would a local newspaper let me place this advert? Now, if Google can map the planet from space, it shouldn't be too hard to stop returning results from sites that infringe copyright. I think the new motto could be, Google, do some good. Now along comes Spotify, the classic disruptive innovator in the music space. Daniel Ek, fresh from success of Skype and worthy of a TED conference in his own right, creates the greatest music library known to man. 11 million songs in the palm of your hand, equal to the great library of Alexandria, except with songs, not scrolls, for $9.99 a month. It's yours. Now let us imagine for a moment that you're all Lady Gaga. You have received a million plays on Spotify. You are the most popular artist on Spotify. It's time to open the royalty check. So what did she get? 
No, $167 for a million plays. That's hardly enough for a meat dress. <laughs> Spotify is valued at $4 billion today. An indie musician might expect to receive 0.004 cents per play. That's 4.5 million songs a month to make minimum wage. It ain't about the bling anymore. And Spotify is not alone. YouTube and other streaming services pay less than this. So if we wind it back a little, how did Spotify manage to pay the greatest and most popular artists in the world peanuts? In a word, equity. Spotify gave away shares in Spotify in return for low royalty rates. Labels don't have to pass on these shares as it's not a sales royalty. The label gets stock, Spotify gets rock, and the artist, not so much. So now major artists like ACDC, Coldplay, and Adele are all withholding albums from Spotify. Musicians can't go on strike, but they can play together and force Spotify and the other streaming companies to increase royalty rates. And now we get to the major labels. The gorillas in the room. We've had a decade of mergers. We've gone from the big six of 1998 to the big five, to the big four, and now we are down to the final three of 2012. The future is not looking too bright for these gorillas, but between them, they still control 70% of the music industry. Extinction is not imminent. These labels were outmaneuvered by the internet. It took Apple, a technology company, to show record labels how to sell music. And in return, Apple took a 30% sales royalty. Deservedly so. They made it easy for the consumer to buy. If we make it easy for the consumer to buy than to download, they will often make the right choice. Let's help our customers. New strategies have been tried to revitalize revenue. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the 360 deal, where an artist pays a percentage of revenue from concerts and merchandise to the label. In a 360 deal, you play a concert to a room full of people, and you sell them t-shirts at the end of the night. Yet somehow you still owe money to a record label. How are records involved? No records were sold. So let's fix this. Do we really need major labels? Or do we return to the model that worked so well before the advent of recorded sound, where minstrels would wander from town to town? Essentially, that's what's happened. There has never been so much touring, or so many festivals, or so many concerts. Musicians can't afford to stay home anymore. But some labels are trying out new models in the search for profit, lower advances, and higher royalty rates. Some labels are offering artist deals that go from a 15% to a 75% royalty rate. Much better, but with no cash advances. Hard going at the start, but better if your record sells. New artists are wondering, do they need a record deal? If you can go to Kickstarter and raise the capital from your fans, then why sign a record deal at all? The truth is, there will always be major labels if there are artists who want to be major. Launching a major, pro a major product requires capital, teams on the ground, and networks. Artists are rising to prominence and maintaining fan bases, but they will always move to a major label for the marketing muscle. The internet cannot do this alone. We have discovered it brings loss as well as profit. We are learning to embrace chaos. These challenges are faced by many industries that are moving to a digital model of distribution. Writers, novelists are all fighting with Apple and Amazon and software companies are struggling with piracy and new app store pricing models. We are moving through a revolution that affects the quality of life for workers, in this case, artists. We are examining what ownership and property really are. So what is music worth to you? What is creativity worth to you? We've looked at the basics of how to save the music industry. Solutions are available. 
Music will always continue to be made and loved. With help from ISPs and lawmakers, piracy can be slowed down. With increased responsibility from key technology players like Google and Spotify, revenue streams to artists can be improved. With new business models, the labels could show us why they need to exist. Thanks for listening.